It's the first week of deer camp. Coming up next on The Journal. From the north, south, east, and west. From the woodland and plains and waterways. Come challenges and thrills and excitement for every member of the wilderness family. These are our stories, our adventures from the wild places, both near and far. All of our hits and misses, the memories, our time spent living the wild life. Join us, come past the street lights. Step into the real world. The world of the Wilderness Journal. The journal is underwritten by The Ina Store, your Cadillac area Kubota dealer with a full lineup of Kubota tractors, utility vehicles, and equipment. For farm or food plot, it's The Ina Store in beautiful downtown Ina, Michigan. And by Mads Outdoor Products, a full-line Avalon dealer. Mads also features featherlight trailers, livestock stalls, and shoes, as well as service, winterizing, and story. Inside or out, Mads Outdoor Products. In the center of it all, Harrison and Cadillac, Michigan. By. With over a century of experience in the Indiana and Michigan area, Reith Riley is a full-service asphalt paving company handling commercial, industrial, and privately owned paving projects of all sizes. To learn more about Reith Riley, and by J&J &J Smoked Meats, makers of ready-to-go, high-protein, low-sugar snacks. At home, or the game, anywhere, and everywhere. J&J &J Smoked Meat Snacks. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, friends, and welcome. Today, we're going to take a look at the first week of Michigan's firearms deer season, now, just like every year, we have family members scattered all over the place, mostly in western Michigan. And I should tell you, we, like most years, have had some hits and some misses. We've had some great stories. I have to tell you also, we've had a couple of real bruisers brought in by some family members. And some are still out looking, like you know, yours truly. Hey, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and we're going out for the first week of deer camp right now. Just after shooting light, Kyle and Ian were watching a couple of deer chase each other around in and out of the food plot. And then another deer, a doe, started working her way down the east edge. She kept watching behind herself, and of course the guys kept looking, but so far at least, they hadn't seen any buck following her. And then, after another slow circle, she just worked her way off into the brush. See her walking away? Yeah, she's walking away now. And other than a doe with a couple of fawns out across the neighbor's hayfield, the guys didn't see any more deer that first morning. Ian 
Damien and Kyle Jr. were hunting together over one of our food plots, and that first morning, as you saw, no buck showed up. And speaking of morning, probably 30 or so miles away, I was enjoying a beautiful snowy morning of my own. I had several deer working through underneath the three big oak trees at the bottom of the draw I was watching. And like the boys, I was hoping to see a buck follow them up through there. And when they all scattered, I thought, maybe. I kept waiting, but nothing ever showed. And I was left just watching the diamonds glistening in the frozen trees. It was pretty to look at, but it wouldn't eat very well. About a half hour later, I did notice one small deer working its way back in the opposite direction. This looked to me like a young doe, and I thought, well, maybe she's got herself an older friend. But in the end, yeah, she left alone, just like I did. There were definitely deer moving that morning, at least for me. And fortunately, we weren't all so picky. Yeah, Kate was set up at another one of our food plots with her uncle Rob, and she had already tagged a beautiful buck earlier in the year, so she was, like I said, not nearly so choosy. First light opening morning found Kate watching our small clover field, and like I said, She'd already done a great job harvesting a gorgeous buck in the youth season. Take your safety off nice and quiet. Okay, can you get on his chest? I am on him. Take your time. Just get him in the scope, get it on his chest. Can you see him good? Huh? Yeah, I'm on him. Get right on his chest. He's just standing. Go ahead, get, if you feel comfortable, get it on his shoulder and just squeeze. Okay, if you know you got it, go ahead and squeeze it off. You ready? You hit him, you hit him, baby. You hit him, I see him kick, watch him. I think he's down right there. How many points did you say that was? Eight. Eight, must be four on a side. New math. It's outcome based. It can be whatever you want, as long as you're good about it. And with that buck tag already filled, Kate was out there looking for a decent dose so she could tag out and then sleep in come tomorrow. And speaking of decent dose, not 40 minutes after first light, there was a real nice looking doe working her way into the food plot. I think her Uncle Rob's question of do you want this one was answered when Kate threw her rifle up onto the edge of the blind. Now all she had to do was wait for the deer to get broadside. And just after shooting, Kate got out her phone and sent me a message. Yes, friends, that is the face of a proud grandpa. Caitlin got one. Caitlin shot a deer. Good for her. 
And after sending me that message, Kate finally got to get out of the blind. The blind, I might add, that she and her cousin Kai painted and go look for her deer. And no, the way that girl shoots, they didn't have to look too far. My friends, let me explain. Caitlin had forgotten to pack a zip tie, so she had asked her cousin Kyle to run all the way back up to my house and get one from my shop. And he did, except for the one he brought back was like three or four feet long, big enough to hang that whole deer with. <laughs> Sometimes that boy. I Hey, Kyle. <laughs> well, we've seen one this morning. Yeah, well, one for one. Yeah, came in, came in pretty quick. Good thing we got her to stop. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do that call, she probably would have ran away from us. Probably. What do you call Ian and Kyle? Yeah, let's give him a call. I don't want to carry her back. Me neither. See that, friends? Another wise decision. Kate asked Kyle to call Ian and the guys went and got the buggy and brought it back so she wouldn't have to help drag the deer up out of the pit. I'm telling you friends, this girl, yeah, she's going to be a deer hunter. Hey guys, how'd it go? Good. Did you get a good one? Come look at it. Yeah, that really is a nice one, Kaylin. Really nice one. Hey, nice job. Nice job. Look her up, nice job. Real nice one you guys got there. Thank you. Friends, that's getting it done. Well, at least somebody was helping feed the rest of the family. Congratulations, Kate. A great buck and now a great doe. Friends, from here, we call that being tagged out. Yeah, <laughs> and as she was tagged out, Kate generously offered her brother and her cousin her stand for the evening hunt, and they wisely accepted. That afternoon, the guys sat there in Kate's stand until just before 5 p.m. when something was coming. There was a lone deer walking right at the blind. At less than 20 feet, this little button buck stopped and was staring in the window. And all the guys could do was try to get small and not get caught staring back. Friends, this obviously isn't a shooter, but if you spook this deer, the chances you're going to see any others, well, let's just say they go down markedly. Fortunately, the guys didn't spook that little deer. Unfortunately, yeah, they didn't see any others, not that evening. The guys certainly had a close encounter with that little deer. Unfortunately, they didn't see any shooters that evening. They just have to wait for the morning like the rest of us. And speaking of the morning, that next morning, Ian and I were out at our good friend, Mr. Charlie's farm in a pop-up blind, and it wasn't long before we were seeing action. That's a buck. I don't know how good, but it's a buck. It's a front one. They're all bucks, but I can't tell you they're legal. I don't think they're legal. Yeah, the second one. 
lot smaller. Yeah, that first one's a long one. We sat there watching a couple of young bucks work their way in and then two more came across the road and worked their way down the field at us. Actually, it was three. Those small bucks passed us, and then one more little deer came trotting in from the other side of the road. We were seeing plenty of action, but still no shooters. At least not that morning. We'd seen a number of young does and young bucks that morning, but by the afternoon, Ian was still waiting on a chance at a mature deer. He'd already made up his mind, mostly because he had to go back to college, that it really didn't matter. He just hoped to see a mature buck or doe. We've been really close. Yeah, a bunch every, of times. Every time. Maybe this is it. Right, fourth time's the charm. Well, I tell you this morning, if we were shooting the little bucks, we'd had a bucket full. Yeah, definitely. But uh, hopefully we'll see a a more mature buck or a mature doe will stop. We saw some of them this morning too, but they were kind of on a low level yeah. drive by. Yeah. <laughs> they did not stop for yes. us. They were like, who, what? No, never mind. Right. Well, hopefully they'll stop and entertain us for a little well, bit. Well, I, 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 I hope they stop and feed us for a while. Yeah. That's all. This is about food. <laughs> all right. Good luck. Thanks. And speaking of luck, 45 minutes before dark, that field started to fill up with deer. There were several small bucks and a whole bunch of does, including a couple of pretty good sized ones. The mature doe ran off to the right. Or was just white. Now all we needed to do was pick out one dry doe or hopefully see a big buck step out of the woods. Either way, Things were finally looking up for Ian. I told you them crackers at work. Yeah. <laughs> I think that last one's a shooter. She's out there away, so I don't know how steady you can get. It's kind of far for this dark. What about this one on the back? Yeah. Yep, clean mess. That, friends, is not how that was supposed to end. <laughs> but I have to give credit to Ian. Being the professional that he is, he just turned his face away from the camera. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is a family show. And that, friends, is how I came to be sitting in a stand watching this technically legal where I live buck work his way down along the pines. He was obviously still a youngster, just an overachiever in my opinion. But I was watching him pretty close because he kept looking down into those pines and I was hoping that something of a slightly larger model would work its way out. And as the snow let up and it started to get dark, I heard it. No, not a deer. It sounded like my hunting partner, Mike, Sorry, shooting. Mike. It's dark. We'll go over there and look. But that's your son. It had to be him. It's too close to be anybody else. It was deja vu all over again. <laughs> Just like last year, I was over hunting at Mike's, and I was watching some deer late in the evening when I heard a single shot from his direction. And just like last year, after it got dark, I went over to have a look. Hey. Hey, over oh, here. Oh, there he is. Oh, 
There you are. Is that you? Yeah. It was you? It was, you, man. You shoot something? What'd you oh, get? I'll tell you, they were moving all day. I, he, he's a beauty. I, don't I had two seconds, Kyle. I was on a 10. Yeah. And there was three little spikes, two spikes. Wait, wait, you were more. on a 10 and you just said, never I had mind? To, I had to switch. Really? I'm telling you, there was two spikes, one about six inches tall, one about two inches tall, kind of goofing off. And here come the six point. And all of a sudden, they're in like a triangle pushing on each other. And I looked to my left, and here come two more bucks. And they were like six points. And I'm watching these, and then to the right, here come this 10 out of the woods. And he's that one with the real low tines, but real heavy. Yep, I know the day you're talking he, about. He come, in both season. Yeah, he come up, and he, he kind of looked at them three there, and he looked at the ones on the hill. And he walked over like to them three, like, hey, this is my woods, you know. Yeah. And they all kind of stopped. And he started turning around walking away, so I picked up on him. And just then I looked to the left, and here come this doe. And I mean, she was just a panting. And I said, something's got to be on that. I, I looked back to the left for one second, and all of a sudden I seen him coming. And I thought it was at 11 I'd been after. Heavy. I mean, he come in low to the ground and moving. I looked at that doe. She looked at them other bucks. There was like three of them there, and everybody just stood aside. And he come through the middle, and I looked back at that 10. I looked at him. He was getting ready to go into the pines. I said, sorry, boom. Oh, good for now. Oh, he's my. down. No, you whacked him good. He, I, I, you know my baby. Yeah. She hit him right, 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 right You ready to go find him? I'm ready. I'll shake I'm you. Ready. If you're that ready, I'll shake your I'm hand now. Excited. Let's go. Let's go ahead. We did him find him I think somewhere. he went into the pines right up here. I'm pretty sure he went in down over here. All right. There we go. A smoker. Pick that thing up, my friend. Yeah, he ain't just taking a nap like I always say. What a beauty. I, I guess. Kind of in charge a little bit. That big old Roman nose. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. What a beauty. Huh? Now, I got to ask you, didn't we do this like this time last year? I think it was right around the same time. Yeah, like the second it. night I'm sitting on saying, boom, up, there goes Mike again. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll tell you, when he come in, I saw this side go by. Yeah. And with my scope, I had just a few seconds to turn, like I said, because he was going to head into these pines. And I did think it was going to be that 11, but I tell you what, I'm just as happy. I would hope. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I wouldn't have given him another second. And he didn't go nowhere, neither. Nice uh, shot. Just 80 yards. Yeah, that's awesome, you know, man. But I'm telling you, when he come in, I've never seen a herd clear like that. Oh, yeah. Well, dominant, you know, uh, is dominant, and that's obviously old enough. That's got to be a four-year-old deer, maybe oh, more. See. He's, you know, he's got some mass here. Yeah. You know, just a big old Roman nose on him. A lot of character in the bases. He's going to make a beautiful mount. He is, like too. Look nice. Look at the chest. Nice, there. yeah. That's going to fill up a bunch of freezer and wall space. Man, I had tenderloins and back straps last night, but these are going to be even better. Yeah. These are fresh. That is just awesome. Congratulations, Mike, on another great buck. Two in a row. I don't know how you do it, but I am glad that you do. And certainly congratulations to Kate for going out and helping feed the family. She's getting it done, folks. She's tagged out, like I said. Hey, I want to congratulate all of you and certainly all of our family members who went out in the first week and harvested some really nice deer. And I truly hope that each and every one of you got what you were hoping to find or are still out there looking like me. Deer season, well, it's not just what we do, it's who we are. It's part of our DNA. And I truly hope that you feel the same way and you have good fortune either way. I hope I see some of you out there doing it. And if I do bump into you, well, you know we're going to stop and share that cup and a fire. And if I don't see you out there, friends, well, then I'll be waiting for you right back here so we can share another adventure from my Wilderness Journal.